Good morning, John. Good morning. So today we're going to, um, well, you're going to talk to me about uh, the recent articles in the news to do with um, inflation, the multiverse mm. bubble, and in particular, you are responding to the Big Bang blunder, burst the multiverse bubble, written by Paul Steinhardt in Nature. Oh, yes. Well, I think the first thing I want to say is that, of course, theologically, creation is not about how things began, but why they exist. A question for theology could live with a whole variety of different scientific cosmologies if they said it turned out to be the right ones to have. But I think every, pretty well everybody has, who is entitled to an opinion would think that Big Bang cosmology is right. It's, it's um, the notion that the universe uh, started about 14 billion years ago in a, in a tremendous singularity, enormously hot and energetic bubble that appeared, so to speak, and then expanded and developed uh, into the, eventually into the universe in which we we live today. That explains all sorts of things. Uh, it explains, for example, uh, if you follow it through, it explains, uh, of course, why the galaxies are moving away from us today, because that's, that's uh, just a continuation of this expansion and, and movement. It also explains some other more detailed things, for example. It turns out, if you think about the very early universe and um, what was going on then, very high energies, very rapid processes, then that predicts, it turns out to predict that the overall nuclear structure of the world as we observe it today should be three quarters hydrogen and one quarter helium. And that turns out to be the case. That's a very impressive prediction mm. to make. And, and so we're persuaded, persuaded of that. It also explains the cosmic microwave background. This is a, 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 a sort of radio noise which fills the whole universe. And uh, where did it come from and why is it there? Well, the answer is that, the convincing answer is, that as the universe began to expand, then there were these very rapid and energetic processes, but as it continued to expand, it cooled and those processes calmed down. And after about, uh, about um, half a million years, uh, things have been so cool that the radiation was no longer able to break up atoms, but atoms are able to form. Okay. And when they did form, then the radiation was left behind with nothing very much to do, and it's been sitting around since then, um, getting simply getting colder and colder, the universe expanded more and more. And so we understand exactly what that's about. The cosmic background radiation is a sort of cosmic fossil which tells us what the universe is like it was when it was half a million years old, which is a very interesting thing to know. And it's always the important thing to know. But there's some other striking features of the universe which are not explained simply by the Big Bang Theory. One of them, for example, is that there is a very delicate balance between the expansive forces driving the matter apart and the gravity pulling matter together. They're very, very evenly balanced. Uh, and in fact, we wouldn't be here if they weren't, if if the expansive forces were a bit bigger, the whole universe would have rapidly become dilute and nothing interesting would happen in it. If the contracted force of gravity had been a bit stronger, the universe would simply have collapsed in upon itself. So it's a very important fact. A Big Bang cosmology doesn't explain why that is so, but a, a theory called inflation um, has, has that property. This is a very clever idea that a young cosmologist called Alan Guth had a few years ago, he saw that this could be explained if, in the very, very early universe, there was suddenly a, a tremendous sort of expansion of space, a sort of boiling of space. So this is called it a, a, a phase change. And the effect of that would have been to, to smooth things out. As things expand very rapidly, they get further smoothed out. And, and so that would explain a number of other things about the universe, for example. It would explain why expansion and contraction are so similar to each other, it would have that effect, it would make them similar. It also explains why the universe is extremely, extremely homogeneous. It's what we call isotropic. If you look in one direction, the matter of distant matter in one direction, it's pretty well the same on, on, on a large scale, average scale, as the matter in any other direction. Again, why should that be so? Well, again, it turns out that, that, that um, expansion explains that. So expansion is a very persuasive theory.
It doesn't explain everything, and it doesn't have all full detail in it. And there are several, there are several um, inflation theories, depending on the details of what is assumed. And um, one of the things you have to make sure, of course, is that the inflation doesn't go on forever. It has to <laughs> stop fairly quickly. Now, you can criticise those any one of those particular theories. It's a bit like the situation, if you like, in biology, with um, the evolutionary idea of um, descent with modification and, uh, and, 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 and natural se selection. And that explains a lot of interesting things about the world, it explains the fossil record, it explains the DNA connections between animals, things like that. Um, but there's a lot of argument about the details. So we have a, a great a, a, a general explanatory idea which makes sense of, of, of a certain broad and very striking and unexpected consequence of what's going on. But you can argue about the little details that go into it. There are lots of arguments still about exactly how evolutionary process works. And inflation is a little bit like that. And I think I think most people who have opinions on cosmology will certainly believe that inflation is part of the story. But which particular version of inflation, which details, is something that um, after that depends that might be different. Now people have the idea of looking for these um, the sign of this expansion which will be deposited in the cosmic microwave background. I said it was a sort of fossil in the earliest times, so there would there not be some some signs in that? That's a much more delicate matter, my friend, and, and, and it's tricky. And some people came along just recently and suggested that, in fact, you, you, could, you could do that and, 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 and that you would find signs in the cosmic, small, very small effects in the cosmic back, ra background radiation, which would, would show the presence of inflation at a very early, very early time. Now, it turns out that... That's, those claims, of, those particular claims, in terms of little variations that were observed, is probably not quite correct. One of the big problems in, in, in any physical theory is to deal with what the experimentalists call background. That's to say, other, other effects which are present, which are not caused by what you're looking for. And some pretty persuasive arguments, I think, have been produced of these little variations that people were appealing to as a proof of inflation, um, uh, in fact, could be due to cosmic dust or things, things yeah, of that nature. And I think, it, so I think that particular matter uh, is, 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 is un, un, unresolved at the moment. That doesn't mean the inflationary idea is no good at all. It means a particular version of inflationary theory is not necessarily demonstrated. Is there a reliable way to find out about inflation? Well, no, I mean, it, 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 it happens very, very early on, it happens very quickly. So it's not going to be a simple matter to find signs of it. And this, 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 this uh, idea that it would leave a sort of mark on the, on the, on the background radiation was, was an interesting idea. It may be capable of being rescued and pursued further, but it certainly hasn't been successfully followed through at the present time. I don't think that's... I don't, that doesn't certainly shape my belief in an inflationary cosmology, and I think that this is just a question that... People have to work harder. Um, my only reading about things like this was Georges Lemaitre. So Georges Lemaitre is my earliest understanding of things with cosmology. Can you talk about him for a moment? Well, Georges Lemaitre is a very interesting character, of course, and he's sort of a hero of mine in a way. He's a Roman Catholic priest and also a very distinguished scientist. And he had the idea of, really, of the Big Bang idea, of the expansion of the universe. He saw that Einstein believed that the universe had been the same all the time. And he, in fact, tinkered with his, his theory of general relativity to try and put that in. The mentor said, no, don't bother that. Don't try and fix it. Take it seriously. The universe, you, your, your equations have a, a solution which represents an expanding universe. Look and see whether that's the case. And George Hubble, who was a... Um, uh, um, observational astronomer in the United States then found after a series of very important observations the expansion of the galaxies. So Lemaitre was Lemaitre is really the sort of grandfather of, 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 of the Big Bang Theory. 
And so if you could talk to people today and tell them what you think the significance is, what do you think about inflation? Is this important? Well, I, I think there's something, I th- I'm sure there's an uh, inflationary process of some sort took place. I think it's very hard to understand these, um, the, these the smoothness and so on of, of the universe, and that's, 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 that's the case. But as I say, the details of that um, are probably still matters of argument. I mean, some, you can have overall explanatory ideas. I use the idea of, of uh, the illustration of the role of evolution in biology. You have overall explanatory ideas, but the details of those ideas, the way they are applied to detail, are, are much more difficult, of course, to, to sort out. John, for me personally, <clears throat> the fact that we don't know the details just makes me in awe of our creator even more. How about you? Well, I, th- I think that that's, um, these processes are actually very beautiful ideas and very beautiful processes. I think it's very important to recognise theologically that if God is the creator of the world, then all these natural processes of the world are expressions of God's will. God works as much through natural process as through any other means. God does, uh, doesn't only work by sort of poking at a divine <laughs> finger, <laughs> pushing things in this direction, but God endows creation with those properties which will lead to very remarkable consequences. Thank you, John. I thought a pleasure. And we'll speak with you soon about yeah. another topic. Pleasure. Thank you.